talking to Annabelle Oakley Watson, most amazing girl, who's very kindly agreed to talk to us about her premature menopause. We filmed it, unfortunately we were so engrossed in what we were talking about that we hadn't realised that the camera had cut out. So we do want to assure you that we did thank her very much at the end of the film, but it does finish a little bit abruptly. We're here with Annabelle this morning talking about what we like to call it early menopause, but medically it's called premature ovarian failure by the NHS, which is a bit of a horrible term. It's quite really. harsh. <laughs> Very harsh for someone who's actually gone through it. So in terms of a premature menopause on the NHS, about one in 100 women before the age of 40 suffer it, and I think one in 10 of, uh, before the age of 45 are termed as premature uh, menopauses. But the average age is about 51, but Annabelle, mm. you absolutely no one near any of those ages. <laughs> Don't think yeah. I'm Thank start you. The process. Yeah. So thanks to Annabelle for even talking <laughs> about this and kind of because we're we're in that age group, yeah. but you've had the experience yes. and you've really kindly offered to share your experience with us. Yes. So thank you, Annabelle. Cool. So can we ask you know, what what happened? How were you diagnosed? So you have premature oh, ovarian failure. Um, so I think it was a case of, so I was 15 or 14 when I first mm. started realising and I think a lot, with a lot of other girls around that time obviously where you start your periods and you start sort of learning things and my mum's always sort of said we're late developers, you know, we're always sort of like later on, later on. My sister didn't start having her periods until she was sort of 16, but even that she was put on the pill to sort of regulate it. Mm. If, I think that's just their sort of go-to thing if you yeah. started to just, you know, how you've had a few but it's not constantly every month so they're just like right, straight on the pill then. Um, but yeah, I think I, it got quite like, looking back now it's so pathetic, but I, I started to like lie about it, and I remember I was like at a school performance, I was like to my mum, oh I think, like, oh, I think I was on my period, mm -hmm. like literally nothing there, like I was yeah, just like, yeah. just like wanting it, and yeah, so like, yeah, like maybe yeah. if you want it and you say it enough it like comes. So my mum was like, oh okay, like you know, like, here's a pad, sort of, yeah. you know, really terrible what's happened on mm -hmm. your performance day, um, and I was like, no no it's fine, and then we went home and she was like, oh like, I give like give me your pen, give me your yeah. wet, and then she was like, oh, there's there's nothing in it. Like, are you mm. sure it's not? And I was like, oh no, it's like when like when I went to the toilet, like there's like there's loads of blood there. And then she was like, okay, and then like like literally a couple of months later, like still nothing, at, like you know nothing happening at all. Um, and my mum was like, well, let's just go to the doctor anyway. Mm. Like we you know mm. we had the same thing with Sammy. Like it's just good to sort of get checked out. Um, just to see what it is. She, my mum had always had problems, like had problems getting pregnant and stuff like that as well. So it had to be very sort of. You know, regimental with it. So your mum kind of. So she, she, she's, she she's, she's let's stop yeah, process. Yeah, exactly. So she was just like, well, we might as well just go for a checkup to see what's yeah. going on, just mm -hmm. sort of like motherly advice. And obviously, at that point, I was still sort of saying, oh, you know, I think it's like I think I have like you know some some periods, but you know, it's not very regular. But like honestly, there was like nothing. And looking back, it's like there was actually mm -hmm. nothing at all. Like nothing no, was going so on. So it wasn't even that you so, started no, and, and they became think, irregular. You I think it's on my record is that I've had one period. Yeah. Like natural. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm not even sure whether, like obviously at the time when I was being diagnosed and going to hospitals I would still be in that sort of mental yeah. frame where I wanted to say yeah. I've had one and I was like hoping yes. it was not a thing. Which was periods like, are such a funny thing, you don't yeah. want you them don't, when you've got them. You literally but, you know, yeah. we're all kind of going, oh god this is yeah. really difficult to deal with and you're saying oh, I've had a period because yeah. you actually, you want to be in the yeah, period Yeah it's like again. really strange, I yeah. guess it's just the mentality and especially when like all your best friends yeah. are going through yeah. it as well yeah. and like you have those conversations yeah. and like I remember ordering loads of like, um, you, you could get like free tampon sample packs online and I'd be like oh yeah, and I was like, <laughs> might as well like, <laughs> like typing my address and stuff and I was like why have you ordered this, like, you don't need it. Yeah. It's like I guess that was just like a, you know, I was Which trying to think. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. And literally, as it almost. By doing this. Exactly, if I prepare myself it yeah. will like put yeah. me in the you know frame of mind and yeah. something might happen. Um, and then so just went to the doctors and they started to do loads of tests and obviously it starts with blood tests um, and just you know going there from there and there and there. And then they were just getting a bit concerned because they were the LH like levels and everything was all like a bit, yeah, yeah, it was all not right, it was too high and then I think the 
FSH levels were just all stimulating hormones. Wow, yeah. see, I, I didn't even know. know. I don't even know. I these remember times. that from my biology O level. That's how old I am. I did O level. <laughs> so I love it when I can remember that. And my biology teacher would be really proud that I could remember But I think it. it's like when I was in science as well, like you're reading about it yeah. and then you're thinking in the back of your head, like, so is this what's happening to me? Yeah. Or like, mm. So it's really strange being in science lessons and learning about yeah, that yeah. and then uh, the doctors being like, well actually you're completely the other way around yeah. and you're like completely wrong. Yeah. And, like your level. So I was like reading it and then like this is what I should be but then I'd go to doctors and they'd be like, your levels yeah. are so like messed up. Um, and so they were basically like, well what we can do is we'll basically just continue going on, we'll put you on the pill to try and regulate it and stimulate mm. it and see you know, what's going on. Um, and so I think I was on for that for about a year and that was great because obviously you'd have your break every month and you'd have yeah. that, that period and I'd be like, oh, it's my natural period, <laughs> yeah. but actually it's just like an artificial one. And I don't think they really explained mm. that to me at the no, time. Right. So I got to the frame of mind, I was like, oh, this is really good. It's like, it's actually happening. Like, it's yeah. not at yeah. all. Um, and I don't think, you know, they, that was ever really sort of explained. Because yeah. obviously we were so young as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that when I got to 15, they were like, right, well, we'll take you off it now because you've been on it for a year. Um, and they were like, we'll do an ultrasound and we'll basically check to see if your womb's okay and everything like that. Um, and they were like, your womb lining's grown loads, it's like thickened a lot, which is really good. It means, you know, you'll definitely you'll hopefully be able to carry. Um, but they were like, well, we're, we're really worried because we can only see one ovary. And so we were obviously like, oh, okay, that's an issue. Yeah. But they were like, but that ovary is so, so, so small and it's literally like a quarter of the size of what it should be. So I think for them, that's when they kind of realise, oh, this is not, this not is right. not good yeah. like, at all. Yeah. Um, and we like, I remember just having to keep going back for like these ultrasounds. And like, I know that like, I love all the baby programmes. It's like, you look at the screen and you're like, there's a baby in there. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, there's nothing in there, it's not even an ovary. They're like, yeah. this is where it, and like, they remember, I remember, they're like, this is where it should be. Ooh. And that's not, there's nothing there. And I was like, oh, okay. Like my mum, and you yeah. were even pre I mean, the, being prepared for that. Did it hit you at the time? What that impact? I, just, I honestly did. It honestly did not hit me. No. Like I don't. Yeah. I just don't think that. I just think it was. You're still in that hit. Like you're still in that time frame where you're like, I'm still young. Something happens. So yeah. And like obviously, everyone was trying to be as supportive as they could be and saying, you know, things might change. You never know. Like it might just. You might just be really, really yeah. late starter. So I think it only really hit me when I was like 20 or like a little yeah. bit older where I was like, there's, there's mm. honestly nothing going on here. No. But I think, I think it was fine and I, my doctor that told me initially when I was 14, oh, this is what, well, it must have been 15 at the time, but I remember going to the doctor and they were just like, we're basically going to give you this diagnosis. Mm. You've, you've had your menopause. And I was like, I haven't even had my period. <laughs> I was like, I don't understand how that's possible yeah. Yeah. that you can have your, they were just like, it's just like biologically like, I don't yeah. know, it's just how it is really. I remember just sitting there and I'm like obsessed with children and babies and like I love them more than and all I ever said from when I was younger was like that's what I want. So that was really hard. Um and it was like even going into like Marks and Spencers and seeing the baby range, I just like burst into tears oh, like immediately. And that that was horrible, especially as like my family know as well how much I am maternal. Like. So you're fifteen at this point. So yeah, fifteen oh, and then gosh. it was just going just continuing to go and I remember obviously I was at school and I was constantly being taken out so I'd have to go to Oxford because they're very supportive there with IVF mm. and things like that. They were sort of saying if we can get in, it got to the stage where they were like if we can get an egg from your very very small ovary which we named Penelope. <laughs> <laughs> just to like try and get through it. It was like we're just going to have to give it, give it a funny name and I like, love it and it will be like oh that's right. Exactly we're like oh Penelope. So um, we were, kept going to Oxford and they were like, if we can get an egg, we will put you like through IVF. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, I'm like not even like in a relationship. Yeah. I was like, I'm not, yeah. like, this is not how I planned it. And it was, no. that was difficult because it's, you know, you always want it to be with your partner and your yeah. husband, and you, like, you know, do it naturally. They were just like, we'll just, we'll just have to freeze them. And then, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll stay alive. But that, that never happened and there was never any eggs being produced. So it was just sort of a case of, Trying through the motions, and yeah, yeah. And, and that was fine. But I think I just remember the day when I got told, like, I got my final diagnosis of premature ovarian failure. Um, like, my dad just came in and was just like, I've never seen him look so like disappointed. And I remember my mum telling me, and she was like, and everyone says that it's really mean that she said this, but she said, We've made you wrong. 
Oh, and I was like, oh my god. I was like, you yeah. can't, like, don't say that because yeah. I don't want to feel like I'm no. broken. No, no, like yeah, that, yeah, but, no. But I think it was you just were as that a mother, one in yeah. 100 yeah. unfortunate yeah. people. Exactly. Yeah. And I think for my mum, she just found it so heartbreaking, especially yeah. when she knew that I'd I carry my doll to school every day. Like, yeah. I was that obsessed yeah. with, with kids. Um, and yeah, it was it was a hard time for the family, but yeah. we're the type of family where we we don't really talk about it. No. We just get on, get on like yeah. come on, stern face, like not. Yeah. So we've never really talked about it. And I remember my brother just once just kind of being like, "I'm really sorry." Oh. Like, and it's just like, oh, like, is he older than you? Yeah. So my yeah. brother and sister are both really older. Sam was like, "I'll give you, I'll give you one of my eggs." Like, "Oh, I have your like, yeah, like and and then, yeah exactly." She was like, "Everyone was just trying to say like what they thought was the most important thing," but at the time, it was literally just like there was nothing you could really say no. to make it better. But you know, life deals you shitty cards. Mm. So, yeah. um, so have cards. you found? I mean, obviously you're with Patch. Have you found it hard growing up and knowing that you haven't got that ability to have children? I think it, would that in fact impact on relationships? relationships? I think that, that that was my main worry and I remember my sister coming in my room that evening like obviously we'd had the whole of like my dad left work to come home so everyone was kind of in the house but like no one was really talking and just sitting in yeah. our rooms and it was all quite awkward. I was just in my room and obviously I was very upset and Sam just came up and I was just like no one's going to want me now. Oh, and I, and yeah. like that's obviously like yeah, a, yeah. a horrible thing for like a 15 year old to think yeah, and yeah. it was it, like it was just now you just think that every relationship you get into you have to tell them yeah. like I know for like a hundred percent like it's not even a case you kind of go through it together and then you realize that it's unfortunate it's that I have to literally tell them the before beginning. anything Don't gets any yeah. expectations yeah. Yeah. but it was like I'm the most open person with it like I would just tell the boys yes. I would literally tell boys that I'd kiss on one night just yeah. because I'd be like just in case this does go any further I can't have children and they'd be like what like, <laughs> I just well, you know, <laughs> I'm just like I'm really sorry but you know obviously I wasn't yeah. ready but it's coping strategy though yeah it's just yeah, I just yeah. prefer to get out yeah. done yeah and you have got that awkward moment yeah later down the line yeah. but i think like obviously patch is amazing and has always just been like you'll be an amazing mother whether it's adoption or yeah. whatever and i know that i can if someone literally put a baby there i would love it so much like yeah. i'm so addicted to children yeah so i there's not a problem with that and now i feel like it's actually like a blessing that i can sort of turn other children's lives around and hopefully help yeah. them which is a nice way to look yeah. at it but at the time you're just so angry You've obviously yeah, come a long way. So, yeah, yes, it wasn't yeah. the way you would like to. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's seven years ago now, but it's still, in some respects, it feels like it was yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm still like coming to terms with it, but then at the same time, like, you've just got to move on, really, haven't you? Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's well, no, I'm not going, yeah, great. Right, I was sort of finished the sentence, but yeah, you've got to move on. I'm going, obviously, I think you're remarkable. Yeah. And you. um, <laughs> I'm obviously. I just never been through anything like yeah. that. So you, you've obviously well, had it's shocking a long to know that time. It's, it, you know, they hap it, that happens. You know, there's, that. there's obviously women who who leave having their children later in life mm. through whatever circumstances they might have, and yeah. then find you know when they hit forty that. But, but yeah. they might not be able to. But did you have any symptoms of going through the moment? So was it hot flushes? Did you have mood swings? Because maybe you wouldn't have known about mood swings because you're a teenager and you're going through Well, that's what I think that's what was so, uh, so difficult is the fact that yeah. anyone that I had, like I had a like childhood boyfriend at the time and I did, like he obviously had no idea what was going on and he was terrible at biology so didn't even understand women's anatomy. <laughs> so like, it was just a case of, you know, mm like I would just be really horrible and it, like no one knew whether it was just teenage or it was just my personality or whether it was the pills yeah, that I yeah, was on. Yeah. But I got put on so many different pills because the first year where they were like, trying to regulate it, it was yeah. none of them were suiting me. I was just like, and my mum will vouch that I was a horrible, horrible person and not just like moody, just mm. not interested in anything, not like just didn't care. And then I finally found one that was really good and we were like happy on. It did take a long time, and I think even that's stressful. Like mm. you've obviously got your natural like. Yeah. So you're taking, yeah, you're taking HRT. So I'm taking HRT now, but I've been on that for quite a while. But I still like obviously the the NHS are amazing, but it's just I don't really know why I'm on it, and I think it's just a case of they're just sort of doing it to keep 
your bones strong and to keep well, things I think that's, 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 all, that's all that yeah. it yeah. is. It's just for someone, you yeah. know, osteoporosis. And exactly, yeah, that's yeah, what they're worried about now. Yeah, yeah. But the estrogen and yeah. There's still like this like tiny niggle of like hope in the back that maybe something like magical, like miracle would happen. And my best friend's like, oh, it's going to be like a little, your little Nemo. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's like that little egg that's left. Yeah. Like, that would be the one. Like, but I'm now confused in terms of like with HRT, I don't know whether it's a contraception, I don't know whether mm. it's helping me, I don't mm. know whether it will like help continue to stimulate things just in case something was yeah. to happen. So I think that's kind of still the... How often do you get a yeah. follow-up or are you seeing... Well? I haven't seen anyone for a long time now, but I think it's just because they were kind of... After the HRT was prescribed, I think mm. they were like, there's honestly not really a lot we can do. Right. They're like, obviously when you get to the stage that you might want to have children or possibly have IVF, we can try that out, blah, blah, blah. Um, they're like, obviously come back to the Oxford Hospital, but up until then they haven't really wanted any sort of follow -up. So you'd just go through your GP? So yeah, I'd just go through my GP if anything was going on and then... Like, because there is, um, it's called the Daisy Network. The Daisy Network. That's the thing yeah. that they handed me when I was 15 years old. Oh. And I remember looking at it and just being like, what the, like, like what is what this? Yes, for that. Like, yeah, just yeah. what is this? But I went online and my mum was really keen for me to do it, to, like, just as a network to speak to people. Um, but it said that I couldn't sign up because I wasn't 18. <gasps> oh, oh God. And I was like, they oh, need to address that. And I don't know whether they have, I don't know whether they have yeah. now. Um, but at the time, that's I had, outrageous. I was furious. Oh, I mean, I, 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 I assumed when I looked at that 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 was the whole reason. I think that's the nature what? of the, what, what I'm yeah. saying. It's yeah. so rare, and actually, we don't have to have addressed it now. So yeah. Yeah. They, they might have, haven't they? Good thing. Good about thing. It. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's definitely something happens. that, she, and I should have definitely contacted them. But I think at the time, I was like furious, and I was like, yeah. why would a why would a doctor that's meant to be on my side? And he was the lead gynaecologist. I can't remember his name. Is the lead gynaecologist, and he was a very like like horribly like he just didn't understand good job you can't remember his no. name then. yeah <laughs> Actually, it's just come to me but i'm not yeah, gonna say yeah, it yeah. but he um i just remember my mom coming out and being like he was so nasty like yeah. there was no compassion there and it's no, not because he's not a woman because i've had some doctors that are unbelievably caring and understanding mm. You just it was just straight down the line and just very, like here's this clinical. network here's yeah. this and that's it and i was like I'm 15 yeah. years old. Which like, is really, you need, you need yeah. sympathy and you know, yeah. counselling, really, for that, yeah. like, that age. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Was, Are you involved with the Daisy Network now? So I joined up again when I was at university, and when I studied photography, I actually did a project through them. So I met another girl that had, um, who lives in Abergavenny in Wales, and she had a similar experience, but hers hasn't been diagnosed as absolutely nothing. It's just mm. that she has got some some mm. issues and her periods weren't regular. Mm. So I did a project on her, which I found really sort of therapeutic. Because obviously mm. I got to speak to yeah. another young girl. Um, but obviously it wasn't as quite as young as me. But um, but yeah, so there are, I'd like to be more involved. I know that they've got a conference in June and I'd mm. really like to go to that. But I think the last couple of years I kind of just have just tried not to really think about that. It's quite yeah. strange, obviously you were like, oh, yeah. like, have a chat. I was like, I can't even remember like what happened or like my yeah. diagnosis. And last night I was like, okay, so I think this happened there. Like, I think I've just like, blocked it out. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I think you should out, go to but... the conference because I think you've just I really like it. It's so fantastic to hear that. I think they need to hear from um, yeah, yeah, young think, women because yeah, you were saying at 15, yeah. you were given, it, 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 I can't even think of an analogy, but you're giving somebody a completely, it's a lifeline that it's not. Yeah, that it's, it's, it's not about the time you get in a lifeboat without mm -hmm. sort of the plug in it or something. It's basically yeah, sinking yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you've expressed it beautifully, and I was not to say that yeah. they haven't addressed that before. I now, think but, they um, I, think, I think you should. Go. I think it's something that <laughs> you could start. No, yeah. definitely, and I think it's an important thing. And I remember going through. I signed up anyway and lied and said I was eighteen. Blah blah. blah. So I was like, I want to see yeah. like what's on this thing. Yeah. I remember all the chats were just basically like. 40, 35 year old yeah. women being like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and I was just like, there's not even like a 20 year old. Like, now I can foresee a little project for you here. <laughs> Maybe, you know, with the Daisy that Network starting <laughs> for But there might be now, yeah. and I don't know whether it's actually just a case of that there are loads of women yeah. that were mm. looking at those forums and didn't feel that. comfortable enough doing it. Because mm. I know that I could have potentially started something and said, you know, I'm very, very, very young, is anyone out there that didn't? Yeah. Just because. I think that just the general consensus of menopause is always to do with uh, like older women, yeah. yeah. and yeah. even early menopause is still an older woman, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and not basically a teenager. Yeah. And it can happen, and it is, you know, 
I think it definitely needs to be sort of addressed. But I'm not, I'm not really sure what they could even do to sort of help it. I'm mm-hmm. the type of person that I need to get through mm-hmm. it. Yeah. yeah, and I think, but I think it's just knowing that you're not the only person out there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I heard an amazing yeah. woman, I think she was in her late 20s, on the radio, maybe World Menopause Day or something last year, and I remember saying to you, and you said, oh, I think this woman was 28, and you said, I have a friend who went through it at 15, and I, you know, I didn't even know you could do it. It's not so, I think, the, you know, there are all lots of people like you yeah, out there, there and must articulate be, young women who are going through and have had sort of piece it all together. Yeah, so. I think it's definitely yeah, something that's, through, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think you can, I don't think you can really, really understand it mm-hmm. at that age. Like, I know I certainly couldn't, mm-hmm. um, not necessarily process what was happening, but just understand like the, the chemical imbalances mm-hmm. and all yeah. of that, like it's all yeah. very like terminology, yeah. you're constantly yeah. having these blood tests for different reasons and you have no idea why. And, even and there's no answer either, exactly. there's no reason in the first So nobody place. reviews your use of HRT, your GP, you just go get up, you want to repeat prescription, are you? The only, so the one main thing that I would say about like NHS and doctors and people to get your prescription is that they need to read the files every single time. So I've been on HRT for a good like three, four, I don't even know how many years now. Mm-hmm. Every single time I go to the counter, they're like, you do you know this is for menopause? And I'm like, <laughs> yes, thank you. They're like, do you, do you not do you not need the do you not need the pill? And I was like, no, this is what I need, thanks. Yeah. Like, like, please do not let me like relive it every no. single time. No. And like, and even the sister that at my GP that does sort of my weight and stuff like that, she forgets every single time. I'm like, I literally come to you every single time. You're like, oh, why are you so why are you on this again? I was like, because I've had my menopause. And they're like, gosh, oh, oh, yeah. wow. I'm just like. Oh, like why, like maybe, like someone yeah. relive it yeah. over and over again. You wouldn't like look at someone without a leg and be like, "Are you sure you don't even have a leg?" Like something like that. And I know it's obviously hidden, but yeah. But yeah, so no one's reviewed it since, and it's, you know, I should probably get it reviewed. But I guess it's just a case of until you know. Well, I suppose there's no need yeah. to really, and if I can see their point of view. Yes, yeah. I'm quite happy. Um, I'm not. There's no problems. And I think the answer would be exactly what you said, is that, you know, it's it's maintaining your levels of oestrogen yeah. for yeah. bone health. Yeah, and that's and obviously sure. the same yeah. with anyone that was experienced yeah. menopause, regardless of their age. Like, my mm. bones, I had to have loads of bone scans and stuff like that to see if, like, and apparently mm. I've got bones of, like, an 80-year-old <laughs> or something. And I was like, oh, I'm 15, yeah. like, I've never broken bone, touch <laughs> wood. But, you know, yeah. they're like, you need to be careful, like, you need to, they try to give me calcium tablets, they try mm. to give me everything just to... Are you still yeah. taking those? Or I don't, I just used to take them, um, to my mum's like horror, I was like I'm, I'm not, I'm generally not taking them. Mm-hmm. Like that, I guess that was like a, a sort of yeah. surprise, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, but it got to the stage where when I was at uni in my first year I stopped taking my pill without telling my mum, mm-hmm. which is obviously a very stupid thing to do and it's a very childish thing to do and I wasn't proud of it and I remember my sister just being like, why are you, like, why mm-hmm. are you doing this? Like I appreciate it's difficult but you need to have it and mm-hmm. like you need it, but I was just like, like obviously at that stage it was probably more not the upset stage but like the anger stage and it was yeah. just like me being like I don't want to take it I'm screwed anyway can't have children what's the point of me having yeah. to take it it's embarrassing taking it every day like it's a constant reminder yeah. but now I've got to stage where every time I take my pill I honestly don't think about it whereas at the beginning it um, even it's like a cycle it's like a it's grief just, cycle I'm exactly you just look every single day the next day the next day the next day it's like Monday Tuesday Monday yeah. Wednesday Friday and then it's like next pill Monday Tuesday and it's just like oh Jesus Christ but like it yeah it was now it's just more now more now it's just like and like Patch is so good at being like you're taking a pill like blah 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 but like not you know just because it's you know we, I need to take it it's something yeah. that I need to take so. Yeah. So yeah, but it was there's so many levels of like sort of understanding it and like mm-hmm. getting to the point where you have accepted it, but you know that it's the best thing for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that for a lot of it, when you get told things like that, you have a stage where you're just like, do you know what? Screw it. Like, mm-hmm. it like even if I take it, it's not going to change anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, it was it like, but it's horrible. I hate thinking that I was that person and that I was oh, that stupid yeah. and like I was just like being an idiot. Yeah. Actually, you've been a bit hold of yourself. <laughs> it sounds to me like you had a plenty of stuff going on. Well, wasn't she brave? We want to thank her so much. I mean, really, we had tissues in the background because she really wasn't sure whether or not she was going to burst into tears or not. But she was incredible, don't you think? Um, for anyone who really thinks um, they need support, we do recommend that you talk to the Daisy Network. And hey, who knows? 
Annabelle might be an ambassador for them one day. Hot Flush certainly thinks she should be.